YouTube family, welcome back to another hour-long painting lesson. Today we are going back to our roots and we're going to paint this waterfall in the heart of a forest. As you know, I love painting waterfalls. We've done a lot of them here on the channel. I think this will be a really beneficial one and probably our best waterfall yet. So, we're going to do all of that. This is a real-time video. It is uncut with the exception of when I go to clean my water, clean my brushes, perhaps get some water for myself. It's important to stay hydrated during even the painting process. But before we get to that painting process, I would like to quickly, and I do mean quickly, talk about the materials. So to begin, here I have a canvas. It is nine by 12 inches. The drawing is already done on it, and it was done with these woodless colored pencils. I like them a lot because they allow me to allocate different colors to different subjects. So here you can see the foliage is all done in green, the water is done in blue, the rock is in brown. It just kind of simplifies things. It's also erasable, so if I mess up, it's easy to fix. Now, I know we're looking at the drawing and it's, um, it's fairly complicated. Again, we have a lot of foliage, a lot of grid lines. There's a lot happening, but don't you worry if drawing isn't your strong suit. I did add the traceable and the reference photo up over on Patreon and they should help you with the proportioning and the drawing process as a whole. If you are new to the channel and unaware, Patreon is a great way to support the channel to say thank you, but it's also a great way to get a bunch of bonus rewards and perks. Up there you can get things like the reference photos, the digital sketches. At the Alpine level you can get access to things like the pores that we talked about, the exclusive Facebook page where we all kind of post our work and help each other, give each other little critiques. I pop in there as frequently as I can to just kind of lend as much help as I can. It's a great way to also contact me and just talk about art in general. But there are also really, really fun things like a bonus catalog of over 50 exclusive hour-long lessons to make sure that you're always inspired, you always have a new lesson to go back to. I post new ones every month and it's a, a really fun, diverse catalog. So go check that out if you're interested. I also do one-on-one -on -one little art critiques. But with that said, let's, let's get back into the painting. Let's continue talking about the materials. Here I have a small dish of water. This is to clean my brushes mid painting. It's also going to extend the wet life of my paint and help me with my glazing, but we'll talk about that in just a second. Here I have a painting cloth. It's great for wiping off my excess paint and water. Here I have my palette. It's actually just a regular old picture frame. I like it because the paint doesn't seep into it and because it's easy to clean. Though if you're going to use one, do be careful because the edges can be quite sharp. In regards to brushes, it's really quite simple with this one. I'm only using four of them. Here I have a large flat slash square headed brush. It is two centimeters here in width. It's great because it can hold a lot of paint and still deliver a sharp edge. Then I have a medium sized square headed brush. This one is about a centimeter width. Then I have one smaller one. This is great for the details. It is only half a centimeter, and I generally like to use the corners as well to work on the really detailed areas. Finally, I have a small round-headed brush. This one doesn't have any sharp edges, so it's great for creating softer applications and details. Then I have my paints, and as you can see on the left and right hand side of the canvas, I only have two of them on display. That's because if you've watched these videos for a while now, you know that I'm really falling in love with the achromatic palette, and all you need for that in the beginning is Mars black and titanium white. An achromatic palette is essentially when you do a painting in black, white, and gray, and it essentially allows you to establish your depth first and then think about color later. You've seen the thumbnail of the video, you know this turns into a very vibrant painting. We do that after with a glazed layer. But first, we paint the painting entirely in black and white. We create grays, we wrap light around subjects, and we do this because it essentially allows us to split the painting into multiple processes to make each easier. When you're doing a regular painting and you're painting with black, white, all of your different colors, you're mixing your hues and your values at the same time and it can be really confusing, especially if you're fairly new to painting. However, you can isolate both of them. You can do your values first, create your depth, 
let that dry, and then come back in and glaze on all of the color. That way you get to think of them separately and they're not competing with each other as you're mixing. It'll, it'll just make your depth a lot better in the painting and your understanding of the process a lot better as well. So that's what we're doing. I'll list all of the colors I end up using in the video description along with the Patreon and all of that, but that is essentially what we'll be using to create this painting here. So with that said, let's actually jump into the painting process and have some fun. So to begin, here I have my titanium white, here I have my Mars black, I have my small little dish of water here, and now I'm going to take my medium sized square headed brush, again this one's about a centimeter width, and I'm going to dip the tip of it in some water. And this is going to do a couple of things. It's going to condense my bristles so they stick together and I don't have any stray ends. It's going to help me extend the wet life of my paint and make the blending easier. Now I'm going to take some of my titanium white with the tip of my brush. I don't want to get it too high up. I don't want it up here. And then I'm going to put it in its own little spot here on the palette. And I'm going to designate this side of the palette to be brighter, this side to be darker, just to simplify things. Now I'm going to take the corner of my brush and grab just a hint of Mars Black and I'm going to move that over into this. And I'm going to start by creating a very light gray mixture and that's because I'm going to begin the painting in the background up here where all of the light is going to be coming from. So it's going to be very bright relative to the rest of the painting. Now I'm going to take this and I'm just going to fill in this larger area that I have going on here. And if I go over a bit of my drawing, that's okay. I can always redraw it, use that digital sketch, the reference photo, or just go back to the start of the video. But here, I'm just going to start by giving it a very basic, clean layer. And I'm going to work background to foreground because it's generally the easiest way to paint, as you'll always be layering on top of different things and you won't have to go back and work around meticulous details. Generally, I think most of us feel very inclined to start the painting with the main subjects in the foreground, but then it makes it much more difficult later on. So there, I began with a very light initial application. Now it's time to add in some details. So I'm going to clean off this brush relatively well. I'm going to switch to the smaller square headed brush. I'm going to make sure that this is nice and damp as well. I'm going to come up with something that's slightly more bright than this for the highlights on my subjects. I'm going to take some extra titanium white, move it over right next to where we had our first application. I'm going to blend the two in the middle. That way I get to see how bright it is relative to the pigment we just made. And we get to make sure that it's a little bit brighter. So that's what I'm doing right here. Now I'm going to come back in right up here and I'm just going to paint on a little ledge for some rocks and I'll paint on a little bit of a dipping moss. And I'm doing this in a bit of a tapping stroke and then I'll have it kind of get lost up here yet again. Now I'm keeping the top stroke fairly sharp, which is great, it's easy to do with this square headed brush. And then the rocks that kind of move inwards, I'm blending the back of them into the rest of this gray, and that way we get a little bit of a gradient, and it looks like the light is going to be wrapping around the edge and then dissipating as you get to the other side because the light can't hit that directly. And I'm going to do this a couple of times, just creating little interesting pieces in our background with lots of light on them. But this is all going to create a lot of depth later on once we add our blues and our greens and all of our color to it. Right now we're just adding in the values to create the depth. And as I get farther and farther back in this, I'm making it brighter and brighter because there's more light in that area and less of this foliage to create and cast shadows down upon it. So it's the slow progression. Also, all of these values are very similar right now. It's all just very light grays, but they're slightly different from one another and that will be enough later on to show all of the really beautiful depth that we have in our painting. 
So this is essentially how I'm starting. Now I'm going to move on to this next area because it's closer to us, but it's still the farthest thing away from the painting. And it's essentially more of this rocky, mossy area. So for that, because it's closer, I'm going to make it a little bit darker. I'm going to take my smaller square headed brush, grab just a hint more Mars black with the corner, move it into the darker area of our initial mixture, and I'll mix something that's slightly darker than what we had. And I'm only using hints of Mars black because it's an incredibly strong pigment and it'll quickly, quickly, <laughs> quickly overtake the light pigments. So we need to integrate it carefully, slowly, and just make sure that it isn't overwhelming from the beginning because it's much easier to make a pigment darker but it's difficult to make a pigment lighter. Now I know that that pigment is what I like, I used that sharp little brush for the edge there but now I'm going to switch to the medium sized square headed brush and I'm going to mix up some more of it and I'm going to use this because we're working on a area that's a little bit larger and we can speed up the process by switching this brush. We don't need to worry too much about the detail for this initial application. We're kind of just building a base and then we can add onto it with the detail once it's applied. Now I'm using a bit of water and as you can see right here, my pigment, it's a little bit thin and that's one of the costs of water. It makes it so your pigment remains wet longer so you can blend with it. It makes it so that it applies much more cleanly for sharp edges, but it can also thin your pigment greatly. So here I'm going to take a good amount of Mars Black, a good amount of Titanium White. I'm going to mix up more of that gray, but because I'm working with so much pigment, the ratio of water to pigment right now is significantly more in the favor of the pigment and so I'm not going to get something very thin like what I was initially applying there. So here you can see very similar color or value rather but it's much more thick which is exactly what we wanted. There we go and then I'll just work this over here, it'll be covered up by a lot of trees and foliage. But if you're looking at this right now, you probably just see a bunch of abstract shapes. And that's something you kind of accept that you're doing when you're painting with the achromatic palette, but it's not a bad thing at all because real life is made up of these abstract shapes. It's only when there's color that we recognize them as the subjects. And so this will help you really figure out how these subjects are made and the actual stroke and line work that's involved in painting them. So again, it's another one of those things where it seems strange, but it's teaching you so much more efficiently. Now I'm going to make the edge of it a bit brighter, so I'm going to take some more titanium white, mix that into what we were working on, come up here to the edge, and then create some different impressions and markings in there. I started by highlighting the edges and then I kind of dragged them down through some tapping, some movements. It's not a precise science here. It's really just making it look like there's a little bit of something draping, which will eventually be a moss, and that the edges are, are a little bit brighter. And then you can also incorporate little brighter spots in the middle to kind of create the idea that there are extra levels of rocks and, and things of that nature occurring here too. Going fairly well thus far. Now we're going to move a little bit forward in the painting and we're going to move to this side of the waterfall. Now the waterfall is like this. The light is coming this way, so it's opposite to the light. The light isn't hitting it at all right here, so it needs to be quite dark. So I'm going to take some Mars Black, move it over to the darker side of my palette, grab some Titanium White, mix those two up and create a really nice dark gray, which I'll then apply right here. And you can see just how dramatic the difference of grays is that we're, we're using right here. It's going to make a big difference it's going to work really well. It's going to make everything pop. You can't make a painting pop if everything is bright or if everything is dark. 
there needs to be that contrast. One makes the other look dramatic. So now I'm going to mix a bit more of that pigment. As you can see, my first layer was a little bit watery. And that's okay, that happens. It's a natural part of painting. It helped us get those nice sharp lines. But now I'm just going to go over a lot of it with this added thick pigment. I'm just working around some of this foliage and the tree, and then I'm moving it back in the painting. Still just being marginally aware of the subjects I'm working around. Being fairly loose. If you find that your paintings look stiff and that's an issue you're having, try holding your brush at the back here rather than like a pencil. This is how we normally learn to draw and therefore it's how we normally learn to paint. However, you'll get much more of a flow in your work if you hold the brush a bit farther back. Here it's kind of in this nice middle ground. I'm going to continue moving this pigment this way, but I'm now going to switch to the largest of the brushes. Again, this one is two centimeters. I'm going to do that because it'll significantly speed up the process and we don't need to be hyper detailed at this point. So again, working with that very dark pigment, working on the dark side of the palette, using the corner here and the tip to create these nice little impressions for foliage that will be there in time. Here I've drawn on a little bit of highlighted foliage, so I'm just going to avoid that. And I'll blend the two of these in the middle. In regards to stroke, when I go over the final stroke, I'm kind of going to move down like this. So I'm moving diagonally with the little movements, and that way it looks like if there are any strokes showing through, it'll look like different levels of rock and such. Continuously going back and mixing more paint. I don't like to mix too much paint early on in the painting process because I like to have to remix my values and colors. That way I remember how to mix them in the future. It doesn't do you much good if you mix the color right once and then you forget how to do it. The goal is to mix the value or the pigment, retain that information and be able to bring it into future paintings. So here you can see I'm just using the corner of my brush to create all these really nice little details in here. Create an opening in the tree there. But again, look at the painting. It's, it's uh, <laughs> almost looks abstract at this point, and that's okay. You just need to trust the process. And it's kind of nice when you paint in this way, especially nature, because it doesn't look wrong it can't look wrong because it looks abstract. It looks like something entirely different. So you can't really get disheartened over not doing something quote unquote right because it's going to look completely different anyway. So if you're someone who kind of starts a painting and then doesn't love what it looks like in the middle, tends to give up or say you'll do something else, this is a great way of painting for you because you won't find yourself in that position. Because of course it's not going to look like anything yet. Now as I get closer to the edges, I'm going to darken this mixture a little bit. And that's because I want slightly darker edges. I want to create a slight vignette effect to draw the viewer's eye inwards. The eye innately goes to the brightest portion of any piece. And so by incorporating it here, we ensure the viewer's eye moves towards the middle and doesn't escape the edges of the canvas. It's also, it makes sense in the context of the painting is all of the lights being emitted from here. And here, there's just going to be a lot of shadows from trees, so you're not going to get a lot of light anyway. Now, as I move down, closer to the bottom of this rock. I'm going to incorporate slightly more titanium white, make it a little bit brighter because it'll get a little bit of light where here it's fully blocked by all of this foliage, but down here there's some openings and some light can get in there. So we're just going to paint that in. It's not going to be a dramatic change. 
as you can see, but it will affect the painting a little bit for the better. Here I'm continuing to just paint around this nice little tree that we have. Again, I'll figure out that in a little bit. I'm not worried about it. And then I'll take a little bit of this highlight and I'm just moving it up into these grays. And this is going to create the look of little rocks, ledges. There we go. Now again, as we get towards the edge, we need to darken it. So I'll take a little bit more Mars black, work that in. Just like that. You can take a little bit of these highlighted pigments and move them up into the darker rock, but you don't want to do much with them. And you can also take the darker pigments and move them over into the lighter, but for the most part, it should be good without. That's just if you want to create more contrast. Now, the edges of this are going to be receiving a little bit more light. The light is going to come down. It's going to wrap its way around this just a little bit. So I do want to create a slight highlight for that area. It's not going to be bright. We're not mixing it on the brighter side of our palette. It's just going to be brighter than what we had and bright relative to what we were working with. And that's a really important concept to wrap your head around. It's when we're adding a brighter layer to something, it doesn't necessarily have to be bright. It just needs to be bright relative to that layer. Otherwise, if we made all of the brights the same bright, nothing would pop and the depth wouldn't make as much sense. This is something a lot of us do when we paint with color because it's difficult to articulate initially. There we go. I'm softening some of the backs of these strokes. That way the front of the stroke looks like a sharp rock and then the back of it kind of blends into the rest of the rock and it looks like that light is slowly cascading over the subject. Now, this side could use some detail. So I'm going to take this brush, put it down. I'm going to head over to my smallest square headed brush and we're going to throw on some leaves and foliage in here. And I'm going to do so by taking this bright pigment initially and just creating a little bit of moss on some of these rocks. And that's going to be done with a tapping motion, as you can see, just doing little taps and then I might do a little bit of a drag. But the idea is that if there's a ledge, and you can make these up as you go, we're going to do more of a flat line. And then once we have a flat line, we're just going to do these little taps going down it. So it looks like we have some draping moss, which makes sense because there's a lot of water here and it'll be a very moist area. Some of the drapes can be much longer than others. It's all up to you. There we go. Now we covered a lot of area here and I want to do more detail there, but before I do, I want to make sure that it's all balancing itself well. So I'm going to take a couple of steps back, six feet back from the painting. That way I get to look at it as a whole in context and that way I know I'm not kind of zeroing in on one area and making it too bright or too dark. So I'm going to do just that, get some fresh perspective. So I took a couple of steps back and I realized that this is all very subtle, which is exactly what we want for the first layer. We can always go back in and brighten. So that's a great first step. Now I'm going to add some foliage into the background here to give that some depth. So I'm going to take more of that darker but brighter pigment. Again, it isn't a bright pigment, but it's a brighter version of our darker version of gray. And I'm going to tap in some little leaves, some little pieces of foliage. Here you can see them really standing out because they're against that gray. You can apply it with a very soft application to create a bit of a brighter mixture. But if you press that pigment and that brush in, it'll blend more with the background. So you can create multiple layers of depth with the same value and the same brush. 
It all depends on how hard you press with your brush. When you press really hard, you'll get a much larger stroke because the bristles will expand outwards and it'll blend more with the pigment underneath. But if you have some fresh paint and you apply it softly, generally you'll get something that stands out more. That was a bad example. It was a, a little bit darker pigment than I had before. So here we go, here's a, a proper mixture. It's nice and bright. And I'm just going to build up some foliage here. Lots of little taps. I'm jumping around, I'm not filling in all of the area at once, that way I get an opportunity to play with a couple of different grays and build up more depth through them. I'm also going to throw some of them in different areas throughout here. We can also create moss as we're going through this process and just continuously adding to everything that we've previously built. This is all about layering. And here, we'll, we'll do a couple more, make it look like there's perhaps a tree up here, lights coming through, it's kind of making its way through openings in this tree, and then we're just catching little hints of it. And that'll be nice. Then as your brush starts to run out of paint, you can work into the darker areas with some much more subtle applications because you don't have as much paint on your brush. And when I'm making these strokes for all of my leaves, I'm trying to make sure that they're moving in different directions. So here, one's moving down. Here, one's moving that way. Down, we'll have it moving in the other way. And it's through this that we'll create something truly interesting. You can also have really dark leaves that have shadows cast upon them, so we could take some extra Mars Black, work that into our mixture here, and work these in. You don't want them to be in front of any of the highlighted ones though, so if you're using this, do be careful that you are working around your previous applications, not on top of them. The light ones can be layered on top of light ones, but the dark ones need to be in the background. There we go. I'm also trying to hold my brush farther back, that way I do get more of a loose stroke. We're doing a lot of a repetitive tapping motion through this, and it's really easy to kind of subconsciously fall into pattern and habit and create something that's very consistent. But it's nature, and you need to take into account the fact that all of these leaves and this foliage is going to be very different from the piece of foliage next to it, and we need to incorporate that diversity as best we can. So the more elusive a stroke you can create, the better it will look in the end. And that's really what we're trying to do. Now we have some real highlights happening over there. Because of that, the light, it probably isn't going to be darker here than it is there. So I want to bump up the light over on the rocks and in the moss. So I'm just going to go to those edges. Here you can see I'm creating some moss, lots of little taps down. There's spaces in between. Create some nice little rocks, like that. Build up the highlight of these. And you see we're just slowly building it up. We started with very subtle applications. And the farther we go, the longer we paint, the more we add that light, add that depth, and make sure that it's something special. And that's really what this process is. It's slowly allowing us to build depth in our subjects. Now, I'm going to work on some of the foliage up here. It's going to be a mix of light and dark. So I'll just kind of grab whatever grays I have already on my palette, that way it's consistent with other grays that we have in the painting. But again, it's important to switch it up. That way we have foliage of different lighting situations. Sometimes the foliage will blend and you won't see a lot of different detail happening in there. And that's because the shadow or the light will be hitting it so consistently that it'll all kind of amalgamate. And that's important to recognize. Just because it's a detailed subject doesn't mean it will always look detailed. 
sometimes it will look significantly less detailed because of the way light's affecting it. There we go. Now we're going to continue with this process here and I'm going to start working on some of my smaller trees. So I have one right here and the tree here is going to be receiving a lot of light on one side, the side that is closest to the light. When you're creating depth, you're wrapping light around the subject, the light's coming in, it's hitting it in a direction. So the side of your subject that is closest to the light is going to be very bright. The side that is opposite to the light is going to be darker. So I'm going to mix some brighter gray over here in my lighter side of the palette. And at a certain point, they may amalgamate, come together, change. But in the beginning, it's nice to kind of keep them separate. So here, I'm taking a light gray going along the sides. I'm trying to create really sharp lines here. So I want to make sure my brush is consistently damp. This does mean that the pigment will be slightly more thin, but that's okay. We can go back in and do a couple of applications and layers. It is worth it. You do want your trees to look nice and sharp. Then the backside, again, is not facing the light, so it'll be quite dark. So here I have a Mars Black, and I'll just throw this behind it. Now something I'd like to note here, you can blend the two in the middle, that will look good. But you can also do more of a tapping motion than a stroke. A stroke will give you the look of a younger tree, that one that doesn't have any prominent bark, where a tapping motion will give you one that looks like it's a bit older, it has a distinct bark and all of these different intricacies in it. So it's important to think about what type of tree you want to create, old or young, and then work from there. Here I'm going to fill in some of these areas around our tree quite simply. We'll have it kind of getting lost down here. So I'll make more of a highlight. There we go. Just like that. Remember that your trees should get larger as you move towards the bottom and smaller as you move upwards. That's because the branches do taper upwards. You know what, we'll move this on top of our foliage. It's that way in the reference photo, and I think it'll look good. So here I'm going back in, I'm adding in that highlight, and I'm really doing a mixture of a stroke and a tap. I do want that slightly more mature look, but it's also not a wide tree, so it can't be that old. Um, so I'm just trying to find the balance there. And then here, I'm just going to create some extra little pieces of branches that are kind of protruding and sticking up. This will give it some extra dimension, make it more interesting. There we go. Now, I want to continue blocking in the rest of this foliage here, but hypothetically, this rock is continuing, and I'll draw, I'll draw a little line so that we get to see it appropriately. Let's say this rock continues like this. That means anything under there is going to be dark rock, anything above might have much more of this light. So I'm going to take my smaller square headed brush just because this is semi-detail oriented. I'm going to create more of this dark pigment that we had and we can test it in that area. Looks good. And I'm going to fill in some areas in between different portions of my tree that look like they're more openings. And I'll connect that back into this. It's okay if this is already dry, we can blend it wet into dry by just using more water or we can leave the strokes in there. And because I'm using the smaller square headed brush and I'm doing lots of little taps, if the strokes remain, they'll probably just look like more detail from foliage that's a little bit farther away. So it isn't a, a negative thing at all. There we go. 
I'm trying to allow the edges to be really rough so it almost looks like there's little leaves that are protruding. Just like that. Create some extra leaves up here. And again, this is an area that looks fairly abstract. In this area, it's starting to make sense, right? We can see the rocks, we can see the moss, we can see some of the foliage, the tree, but then we come back into this area that's canvas and then single value, and it's, what is that? And again, that's, that's the wonderful thing about this. It, it's just such a, a natural process so that you don't, you don't entirely know what it's going to look like until the very end of the painting, so it doesn't make you feel like you're not doing something right because it's not supposed to look natural yet. So with that said, I'm now going to, now that I'm done the rock, I'm going to go in and I'm going to work on some of this foliage in here. And it's a bigger area, and I just kind of want to block in a base layer, so I'm going to take my medium-sized square-headed brush because it's a bit, bit wider. Again, this one's one centimeter instead of half. I'm going to mix up a gray that's a little bit brighter than this for my darker under layer. So take some titanium white, I'll move that into our Mars black or darker area. Take a little bit more titanium white. And now I'll test it along the edge here. It looks like it blends really well, which is not exactly what we want. We want it to be a bit brighter, so here's some extra titanium white. Now we'll try it, and there we go. That's brighter. That's what we wanted. Now I'm going to move my way around the edge while I still have a lot of paint on my brush. And I'm just going to do these little taps in different directions and strokes. That way it looks like little pieces of foliage are kind of sticking out here and creating these neat little impressions. Just like that. Lots of little taps. And this is going to continue up above my cliff line, which is why I put it in, just so I knew what I was covering under and over. We're going to come back into this and add some highlights and things, but this is a good start. We're going to build light on top of it to create that depth, start with our darker pigment and then build. There we go. I'm not following the reference photo exactly, I do like to take artistic liberties, but we're keeping it in mind. I have it up kind of in the, the corner of my studio right now, that way I can use it as a reference, but it's semi far away so I'm not following it to a T. Get to interject more pieces of my style, what I like into it, which is always fun. There we go. Need some more paint. Mix that up. I mix it up on top of my previous mixture, leaving a little bit of the initial mixture on the edge so that I can reference what it's looking like. If it's too bright, too dark, I can see what it looks like beside the initial mixture, and that way it's just easy to figure out. There we go. It's generally best to do the edges first while you have a lot of wet paint and an abundance of it. But here, I still need to go back in and paint some of the backdrop. So I'm being a little bit more loose with it knowing that I'll have to touch it up a little bit. This is why we paint background to foreground, where here, this made sense down here that it was in the foreground, it was the next thing to paint, but up here, it didn't. So because of that, I'll have to work around the edges. It's okay, it's a good thing to learn. It's a good thing to do once in a while for keeping up with your skill, but it's something we generally want to avoid. So, while this cliff right here exists, let's say there's another one right behind it. It'll be a little bit farther back, so it'll be a little bit more consumed by light. So I'm going to take that dark, a good amount of light, make something a little bit brighter than what we have here, and I'll try it along the edge, see how it looks. It's brighter, but it's not 
much brighter, so I'll take some more titanium white. Just keep brightening that slightly. Try it again. There we go. That looks nice. And then I'll just work that with the corner of my brush around my foliage. As you can see, it's quite similar to the foliage, but that's okay. As we get towards the edge, remember that it's going to get brighter. So here I'll take a lot more titanium white and I'll create that edge of rock, just like this. So you can still loosely see the outline of the tree, but it isn't hyper-dominant like it once was. It's a good mixture of the two. Next, I want to add in some detail into this tree right here, but I don't want to do it while it's still really wet, because if I do, my new brighter pigments will simply blend with those pigments, and we won't really get much of a stark contrast. However, if we wait, then we'll be applying wet paint on top of dry paint and it won't blend to such a good extent and we'll be able to create those highlights much better. If you find that you're ever just throwing paint on the canvas and you're not getting the effect that you want, you say, hey, that's the right color or the right value on my palette, but it's when I put it on the painting, it's not that. It's because it's blending more so with the pigments you already have and you just need to let it dry and then come back to it with a thick layer. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to take a little break and then we'll come back and we'll work on our tree. The paint's had a little bit of time to dry, so now I can take my smaller square headed brush, make sure that it's nice and damp, and come back in with some highlights. So I'm going to take some titanium white, I'm going to move it over into our lighter grays, grab a hint of Mars black, just in case this is all dry, I don't want to work with a pure titanium white. I want something nice and bright, but not that bright. So now I'm going to pick an area of the foliage that I know that'll be closest to this, and I'm going to start working on some little pieces of foliage here, just like this. Now you can see these are extremely bright in relation to anything else that we have here, and they are really going to pop in relation to all of that. So I'm going to be fairly conservative with my application, only really applying it to the edges of the foliage that are going to be receiving a lot of light. And then as I move that way in the tree, I'm going to use less and less of it. Now once I've kind of cleared that initial line, I'm going to move in slightly and I'm going to create more of those strokes, as you can see. However, I'm leaving little openings and areas in some parts. In some I'm overlapping, and overlapping does work, it does work well, but if you leave little openings, it looks like there are darker areas of the leaves, or additional leaves underneath that aren't receiving that much light, and it builds some extra depth. Then as you start to run out of pigment on your brush, you can move farther back, as it isn't going to be as bright or stark as when you first started applying the paint. See? See how subtle that is now? When that was what we initially were working with? So now that I have the edge kind of covered, I'm going to take a little bit more Mars Black, darken this gray just a little bit more, and now I'm going to create some additional clusters of foliage. This one's going to be happening more so in the middle of the tree, so this one's kind of overlapping this right here. I started with the edge and now I'm moving my way back in. I'm going to create some openings and kind of gashes in this as well. And I can also take some of this and move it into the back of this because it will be darker than that other highlight. But you can see how my hands really just, that's far too bright, one second. There we go. Cover those up, blend with them. You can see how my hand's really just jumping around, doing a tap here, a tap there. And I'm trying to keep myself moving and almost stay out of my own head. Because, again, we can fall into these habits. So I find that I also like to jump from area to area in the tree, as that's going to help us 
stay out of those patterns or at least not incorporate them too much in the same area and make it obvious. Here's a bit more of a highlight. I'm creating another little cluster in there. There we go. Now let's incorporate some smaller branches and we'll do so with just the highlights that we were using. Because they'll be so small, they won't be able to show the dark areas wrapping around. So I'll just continue some of these branches up into the tree. And then we can move them out, implying that the tree continuously goes on. I'm trying to start more in these darker areas where they'll really show up, but I'll also throw them occasionally in the rest of the tree as well. Making lots of small little applications, keeping them concise. And the more we add, the more interesting it becomes, right? There we go. It's good to have them overlapping a little bit as well. It'll make it look more realistic. Real branches just don't move upwards. They have slight turns and they kind of move on top of each other. They exist in, in 3D space. And it's important to illustrate that in your painting as well. Now I'm going to go back and just do a couple extra little highlights to some of these areas that are more so in the middle and just make sure that my tree is nice and filled in. We don't want too many big blank areas, so I'm just trying to get a little application throughout there. Now this is something we could do for hours on end, just perfecting it, going back, adding more, creating more layers, all of that. However, I am teaching this lesson and I, I do recognize that I need to move on at some point. So I think that's what I'm going to do right now. If I need to go back, I will go back, but that is, that is quite good for now. From there, I'm going to move down in my painting, and I'm going to do that because I want to separate the halves of the paintings just to simplify it a little bit. When we are working with values and without color, it can be difficult to distinguish what subject is what initially. So to make that easy, I'm just kind of breaking down the canvas into different sections. Now I'm going to take my medium sized or my larger square headed brush. I think I'm going to go with the larger square headed brush. And I'm going to start working on the ground right here. So it begins with a little bit of a, a laneway, which will be catching a good amount of light from there. A bit of it will be blocked by shadow, but it'll be relatively light. So I'll take some titanium white, some Mars black. There we go. And using that sharp edge, I will just create this nice little line. There we are. And then it'll get really dark back here because again, there just isn't much light. So I'll mix nice dark pigment over here. Just like that. I went over my tree a little bit, but that's okay. I can always go back in and fix that up. And then once we have that, I'm going to move into this bottom area, which is going to be significantly darker for my base layer at least. So I'm going to take a good amount of Mars black, make something really dark, start in the corner. And remember, we want our corners to be darker because we do want to create a slight vignette in our painting. And then I'm just going to move this over all of the foliage that I have drawn in the painting. trying to keep my brush relatively dry, but I'm still wetting it occasionally to make sure that it doesn't have any paint actually drying on it. And so that I do get those semi sharp edges, but this right here, it's not detailed work. It's not meant to be. I'm just creating a base layer, which we will cover for the most part in a little bit.
There we go. Nice and easy. Just like that. Now, I'm going to switch back over to the smaller square headed brush and add in little pieces of foliage like I did up here, down here, but I'm going to do it now so it does blend a little bit with this and so it isn't as dark as this. I wanted this to be much brighter because it's higher, it's closer to the light, it doesn't have shadows from trees like this being cast on it. So these down here, they are going to get highlights on some of the leaves, but not as much as the ones up there. All important things to consider when you're working on your painting. So here I have some light gray and I'm going to start creating some foliage and I'm going to begin kind of at the bottom here and then I'm going to layer on top of it as I move upwards. That way the new foliage is always on top of the old foliage and the depth just makes sense. And I'm going to create these as little bundles of foliage, kind of fun little bushes, lots of leaves. can really touch up the tops of them as we'll get the most light. There we go. Create another one right here. So again, starting at the bottom, creating all of my first little rows of foliage, then the second one overlapping them to a point then my third, and as I move upwards, it is going to get slightly darker because I'm running out of paint, but that's okay because I'm going to go back with more of a highlight on the top and fix it up. There we go. See how that worked out? And we'll go back on ones like this a little bit later as well. Once it dries a little bit, I do want it to be darker, so I do want that blend to a point, but at some point I will want some areas to be brighter. So it's all about figuring out your process and, and how you like to do this. Here, I'll start at the bottom. There's my line of foliage, moving up, creating another line. Moving up, creating another line. Started to run out of paint, and we need the bottom to be the darkest area, so we do need the top to be brighter, so we do need to continuously go back for that paint. There we go. Creating all of these interesting little bushes to line our path. Are they considered bushes if they have foliage? Maybe they're... Maybe they're plants. Hmm. In any case, here I'm starting this time from the top and I'm working my way down, just to show you what that looks like. It's a little bit more subtle. It isn't the way I necessarily recommend doing it, but I'm also a big proponent of breaking the rules in painting and doing what you like and what feels natural to you, not necessarily what people like myself tell you to do. It's important that you keep your own painting styles and what you love about painting in there. If you followed the best painter in the world and they, they did one thing one way and then everybody else did that same thing, then every painting would look the same and it wouldn't be special. And you also wouldn't have the personality or wonderful traits of all of the people doing those paintings. So it's important to remember that the parts of you that you work into your painting are a beautiful thing. And incorporating those even if it means breaking some of the rules I tell you or other creators tell you, that's okay and, uh, and I encourage it. Be yourself when you're painting, even with tutorials. These are great in that they allow you to create these paintings too and show you the techniques to create them, but you want, you want parts of yourself in them too. And I want parts of you and your work as well. I don't just want a thousand exact copies of my work. And for those of you who are kind of following this to a T and you're, you're now thinking, oh no, what do, I, what do I do? Don't worry about it. A lot of us have our own innate painting styles that 
just kind of bleed into painting as it is without us even thinking about it. So your painting probably is different and interesting in all of these ways. And, you know, I'm sure, I'm sure I could learn a lot from looking at them too. So don't, don't worry about it. Just remember that you can break the rules and come up with your own versions of these as well, your own techniques. You can work backwards if you'd like. Here I'm going back in and I'm adding slightly more highlights. Now that we have these brighter pigments, it's becoming more and more apparent how much brighter that area could be should we want it to be. So I'm just going back in and filling that in. There we are. It's really nice coming along. Now I'm going to work on this bush right here. Lots of little bushes to practice. Again, not not entirely sure that they qualify as bushes, but you know what, it's, uh, it's low to the ground and it lines the walkway. So if it's not a bush, it could be a bush and a, a bush would be a great thing to paint here. Here again, I'm starting from the top just to show you there are multiple ways of going about this, even if they're not what I would innately do initially or recommend initially. Build up a little bit more highlight in it at that top area. And you can see that there are so many versions of gray happening here that the light and the dark side of the palette no longer really applies, but it did help us organize in the beginning. And that's great. There we go. Now I'm going to work on this little tree that we have right here. I'm going to begin with a base layer like I did with this one. So more of a medium gray. Mix that up. See what it looks like in contrast with the rock and the moss behind it. This looks really nice. It's exactly what I wanted. A true medium gray. And then I'm filling in all of these white areas that are left, all of these open areas of canvas. and then we'll connect them all via the tree, the bark, the trunk. There we go. It's a much smaller tree, but having that diversity of size of tree will make the painting so much more interesting. Now this one, I'm going to make a little bit darker than this one. So I'm going to start with my darker pigment and I'm going to run it down into this bush. Just like so. Also going to extend this rock a little bit. It's a little bit dark, so I will brighten it with some titanium white. Just do a little bit of correcting. There we go. That's nice. That's really nice. We'll create some highlight for the foliage. Get some extra titanium white. Remember to kind of bounce your brush around. This will get a lot of highlight. It's kind of more out in the open than this one. It doesn't have many rocks kind of in front of it, so we can be fairly liberal with how we tap these bad boys on. There we go. Nice little tree. From there I'm going to go back in and I'm going to add some extra little branches. It's also important to know that some branches can be dark and some branches can be light because there are different types of bark and trees and, and shades in those branches. So don't feel like you have to kind of homogenize it. You can make it interesting. You can play with these things. There we go. Like that a lot. 
Now what I'm thinking is I'm going to take a couple of steps back, again, reevaluate my values, how it's all kind of coming together, and then we'll come back in with hopefully the next step of the painting. Something I noticed when I stepped back, this area, this area, and this area are the darkest portions of the painting, which doesn't really make sense. So this is why we do these value tests with the achromatic palette first. The lights coming this way, it's really going that way, so the light's coming this way, and then a little bit's coming this way, and then a little bit's making it over this hill right here and catching that. So the farther we go this way, the darker it should get. It doesn't make sense that that, that, and that are the darkest area. So how do we remedy that? We're going to take our medium-sized square-headed brush, I'm going to take some Mars black paint, I'm going to take just a hint of titanium white, I'm going to go all the way to the very edge, and I'm going to make this edge darker. This might mean, if you have an open area, just doing these large flat strokes, but if you're working your way into foliage, it means doing this tapping motion again that you did to create all of that foliage using the corner of your brush as well. And what this will do, it'll re-instigate that depth and make it look like the eye is really being drawn this way. It'll probably make our tree stand out much better too. You can leave little openings of these gray areas and areas for foliage as well. That will be fairly interesting as they pop. There we go. Make a little bit of the path darker. My brush is getting fairly dry, but I'm okay with that. I can get a little bit of this gritty texture down there for the ground. It's kind of neat. And then I can even move a little bit of this back into here for the really shadowy areas. Now I'm going to take a couple of steps back and see how that turned out. And that has a lot more depth. Great. We were successful. Okay. See? can be so easy, but if we had color in that, then it would be remixing greens and browns and all of these different things. Instead, it was just going back in with a value and fixing it up really quickly. Again, big, big benefits to painting in this style. Now, I want to kind of darken some of the land that's under here. So I'm going to take my medium-sized square-headed brush because I want to cover a decent amount of area, but not too, too much. Then I'm going to take a little bit of titanium white and I'll create this kind of land mass right under a lot of these bushes. I'm using the corner of the brush to move in between some of the foliage that we have. Just like that. We'll move that out this way too. There we go. But I don't want it to be that dark all the way around, so I'll also take some titanium white and I'll go around the edge like this and I'll blend it up. That way it looks like it gets darker and darker as you move closer to under the plant life because it'll have more of a shadow. Again, we're just creating a little bit of depth with a subtle, subtle detail. There we go. If we're a little bit messy, that's okay. We can always touch up the plants. That worked well. I'm going to clean my brush off. And now I'm going to switch to my larger square headed brush. And I'm going to create the first bottom level of my water. It's going to be in multiple tiers. It's going to be trickling down in some little rapid -y areas in a couple of areas, but I just want the base. Now this water over here, it's going to be dark because again, it has all of this shadow. The water over here, it's going to be light because it's going to have all of that light. So I'm going to start by mixing up a darker gray 
And I do want it to be a gray. I don't want it to be as dark as the shadow that we have underneath the plant. So I'm just going to apply this. I'm going to use the nice edge of it to work around all of my detail, as you can see, right back in here. And if it starts to blend, that's okay because the water will wash up on the land and the shore. So it does make sense if they blend to a point. And I'm going to bring this out around the middle. Now, I'm going to take a lot of titanium white, mix up a good brighter mixture. I still have some of that gray on my brush so I don't have a pure white. I'm going to apply that over here. I'm going to begin by making sure this edge is taken care of so that I don't take more of this dark gray and move it in. I want this to be the brightest of areas. And then I'll bring it over here and we'll start doing this subtle blend of the two. Now it moves from dark to light and that's exactly how we want it. Now the water will have a lot of detail in it later on, but we'll come back and we'll add that at the end. So, again, we are, we are just off to a great start. I'm having a lot of fun here today. Now it's time that we tackle this area, work our way around here, and then into this side of the painting. So, because this is such a small area, what brush are we going to use? We're going to take our smaller square-headed brush because it's easiest to work around that area. Now I'm going to have some foliage that's kind of canopying atop this area of light right here. So I'm going to create a light gray, take some titanium white, a little bit of Mars black, just like that. There we go, that's nice. And this will be some really thick foliage, so it'll be a bit darker than the foliage that we have right there, for the most part. And we'll just move it that way. You can see that I'm kind of just grabbing grays randomly from my palette. As long as they look like they'll be in this vein, I'll be happy. Here I have some darker ones to layer on top. Put a little bit of that darker pigment over here as well, just to make sure the corners really, again, the darkest portion of the painting. And here I'm just moving my way around, making lots of these interesting little strokes, different directions, left, right, lots of little sweeping motions. Make the top a little bit darker, because the light won't get there as well, as easily. And we can also take some fairly light gray and just work in some trees in the back too. Right up here, up top. That's nice. You can really see the detail starting to elaborate and come together. Now we're moving into this more open area. So what do we do? We switch to a larger brush. Here I'm going to go to the largest brush because this is detailed but not as detailed as what we have over here. So I'm going to be able to be slightly more free with my application. I'm going to start with a medium to dark value like this, and I'm going to make it get darker as we get over here. Why? Because this area, again, it's very well lit, but as we get farther and farther over here, even though it's in the direction of the light, it's getting more and more shadow cast upon it. So, what am I going to do? I'm going to take some Mars Black, I'm going to mix a good amount of titanium white in there, throw that up there, mixes really well with the foliage 
pigment we had going on. I'll use the corner of the brush to create all of these nice little taps. As you can see. There we go. As we get farther to the right hand side, I'm going to mix in a little bit more Mars Black. And I'm covering up some of my foliage at this point, but that's okay. I have a good idea of where it is. And I am still looking at that reference photo. There we go. Now, I'm going to take a couple of steps back, make sure that this isn't too dark in relation to this, and probably put some extra titanium white on my palette here. After taking a couple of steps back, I do feel like that area is a little bit dark, so I'm going to lighten it right up here, but I'll keep the corner darker. So here I'll take some titanium white, just going to take a step back, make sure I know right where I'm putting it, and then I'll work it in this area. So you can see it's a little bit brighter. I'm trying to use the corner of the brush to create this little tapping effect, that way if anything shows through in the blend, it'll just look like foliage. Just using that nice little corner. And that's definitely brighter than it was, which is good. So, now, from there, I'm going to continue with this, and I've blocked out a good area for my tree, which I'm going to avoid, but I'm going to continue layering on this darker backdrop color around it. Just going to kind of isolate this tree first, that way I don't accidentally move on top of it. Not being perfect, but keeping in mind where it is. And then as I get more towards this edge, again, darkening slightly. There we go. As I move back in, I'll move in a little bit more titanium white. Just like so. It's really wonderful how loose you can be in these base layers. It's a, a very cathartic experience. Now as I move this way, I'm getting closer and closer to that light. So I'm working in more of a lighter gray as you can see right here. And I'm working on some foliage. So I'm doing again a lot of tapping with my brush. I'll allow it to get lost in the darkness over here. So I'm doing that tap and tap, 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 tap until it blends and I lose it right in there. And this will create a really subtle depth and change of light, which is nice. Here it's kind of stark. It, it very much stands out. It's poppy. This it'll be a subtle gradient. And you can do both. And having both just makes the painting so much more interesting. Here again, I'm just watching my tree. And then I should have this nice little textured tapping effect on the edge of all of these pieces of foliage here. But right here, I have my rock. And I need to paint that first because this is layered on top of it. This is farther away than this. So I'm not going to waste my time getting all of that detail perfect because I know I'm just going to have to go over it again. So instead, I'm going to take this brush, make sure that it's fairly clean, and I'm going to create a very light rock here. There's a lot of light coming down in this area right here, and it's important that we accentuate it. So I'm going to take some titanium white and move it to really the brightest gray that I have here on my palette. I'm going to take a little bit of Mars Black. That way it isn't a pure titanium white. 
and I'll try working that on just like this. And I'll create the highlights to some of these rocks that are going to be protruding with it. Then I'm going to make it slightly darker. I'm going to come in from the bottom and the back and then I'm going to blend until they meet. And I'm not looking for a perfect blend here, I do want it to look a little bit textured like a rock or mossy. So I can either do a tap for a mossy effect or I can do more of these sharp clean lines for a rock effect. And you can see the difference of highlight here, it's more muted, here it's much more bright. And we're just getting that difference because this is actually touching the light whereas that isn't. There we go. Speaking of the light, it just got much brighter outside, I think. I'm going to take a little break and check the monitor, make sure it's not overexposed. But here I'm leaving a little bit of unfinished area, that way I know where my tree line is. So I'm going to stand up, take a couple of steps back, again, gain some perspective on what needs to be brightened or darkened, but also check the camera. So after taking my little break, I'm just going to double check. I think I want to make this a little bit brighter. So I really have that light coming through. So I'm going to do that with my smaller square headed brush at this point, make it a little bit more detailed. Create some really nice light grays in here. And then work this in. Just like this. It'll make the contrast in between the rocks much more subtle, as you can see, but that's okay. We can lose a little bit of contrast, a little bit of pop in the rocks to create that accurate, proper highlight. Now I'm going to work on the edges of the foliage, and I'm going to make it a little bit darker here what we were just working with. Don't want it that dark, though a couple of them could be. Try again right here. It's a little bit bright. Let's try blending them together. The blend is exactly what I wanted. Good. Sometimes it's just trial and error. And here I'm creating all of those little pieces of foliage through those nice little taps. just like so. And we'll move that back into the rest of the tree. I'm rotating my brush as I make these little taps. That way I get a different impression each time. There we go. And then as we get towards the bottom here, it can all kind of just blend together. It doesn't need to be hyper distinctive. It makes sense that eventually the values of your subjects will match in the shadow, and that's exactly what we're having happen down here. Now I do want some lighter foliage up here because the edge will catch a little bit more light. So just tap that on nice and easy. Create some pieces of foliage that are kind of protruding so they'll catch more light up here. As you can see. There we go. Going to add in darker tree right here. Maybe another one right here. Coming along really well. I do want to make the bottom of the waterfall slightly darker add a little bit of contrast. It'll also make the very light 
pigment that we use for water stand out well against the rock. There we go. Now I'm waiting to do the water because I really want to make sure that value is as correct as it can be. So I'm going to come back to that. It's really the main focus point. I want as much practice in the painting as I can get before I get there. So I'm going to now move on to this tree and I'm going to begin with the foliage. I'm going to use the medium size square headed brush because it's a good size. It still has those nice corners for the edges. can still pick up a lot of paint. And I'm going to start this with a medium to light gray, and then I'll add a light gray on top for the highlights. So here again, working along the edges, not lots of nice little tapping effects. Just like that. It's kind of watery which again does happen if you dip your brush or clean it too frequently. So here I just mixed up some more paint and now I'm applying that instead and it's much more thick. There we go. Kind of funny that through the process and the base layers it just kind of looks like a wet gray blob and otherwise almost a, like a, a classic photo. But that's how we build it. It happens slowly with trust and faith in the system that we built here for painting. There we go. Going to make the back of it a little bit darker because it's significantly farther away from the light because it has more dense foliage for that light to work through. Create some extra depth in our tree. go and I move that slightly towards the foreground. That said I'm now switching over to the smaller square headed brush taking a little bit of our titanium white building slightly more of a highlight and now we'll apply this to the edge of the tree that's receiving the most light that's closest to the light source Just like so, and I'll move it back into that darker area as well. So I did the edge, and now I'm moving in. Again, starting with the edge, and then I'll move in. And these two trees are starting to really conflict with one another. One is significantly um, brighter on the edge, but they're both middle values. They're very similar. So we can go back and we can change that if we'd like, or we can allocate different colors to them later in the glazing process. There we go. I'm just going back and making sure these edges are exactly what I want. And to show you how to work backwards, I figure I might as well do this, it's a good lesson. It's not the most efficient thing, but it happens to all of us and it happens occasionally. So we did the foreground here on top of part of the background so that we could just kind of apply the paint liberally however we like, cathartically. However, the background again, it, it shares very similar values and I want to make the edge of this a little bit darker, um, the edge of the back one. So I'm going to take my smaller square headed brush and I'm going to go back in the painting and I'm going to work around all of the detail that I just created with these leaves. And I'm going to blend this through a series of taps out into this bush that we have or this tree that we have right here. Apparently everything's a bush in this painting. Um, but as you can see, it's a little bit more time consuming it isn't a natural way of creating depth, but it is a way of going back and fixing things. And if you are relatively concise with it, 
you can still build a really beautiful painting with this effect. So don't worry about messing up and kind of having everything being the same gray. You can go back in the painting and make things darker later on as I'm doing right here. It's just a little bit more tricky than the initial process. But it is doable, so don't worry too much. Or at all. Don't, don't, don't worry at all. This is painting. It's meant to be fun. There we go. Here I'm just creating more of that little foliage texture in the background with these very dark pigments. Moving it into my tree a little bit. And just continuing to try to create as much diversity in this negative space as I can. A negative space just refers to kind of blank space that your main subject doesn't occupy that doesn't really have any detail. Here creating slightly more of a highlight, tapping that into my tree here, just continuing to create contrast and build up that depth. I'm also going to create some foliage up here that's kind of dangling down. That's why I left that little spot there so I remembered. Just a little visual cue. And I'm also going to create some right here. It's not going to be as bright. I'm allowing the paint to just run out on the brush as I add this extra detail. Come back, fix a little bit of this up. But there we go, slowly just adding all of these nice effects. Now to come in and work on the actual tree, I want it to be a, a relatively subtle gray, but I want it to be a little bit darker, so I'm starting with some Mars Black, then I'm adding a little bit of Titanium White, and now here you can see coming back and painting the body of our tree. A little bit of it is getting lost, and if you find that, you can make it extra dark to begin with, just so you know where it is. And then come back in and paint the highlights in it, which is the route I'm currently taking. Remember to make your branches smaller and smaller as you progress. Here I'm kind of going off the initial path of where I wanted my branches and I'm just kind of having some fun moving them about. Again, not a, not a bad thing to do in your painting. I'll add some other trees in the background here. Just like so. Give them some branches. Weren't part of the plan, but I was looking at them and I said, hey, you know what? That could work really well right there. Why not give it a try? So we are. And it can really just be that simple. We can even go back to areas over here and say, hey, you know what, let's, uh, let's paint in a couple tree trunks, very simply, like that. Paintings are incredibly malleable and that's what makes them so wonderful. Such a, a freeing medium. There we go, just going back and darkening it a little bit. Now I'll take some titanium white, mix up a, a lighter gray, and add some highlight to the edge of our tree here. Remember it can be done with a tapping, or a smooth stroke. The tapping will give it an older look, the smooth stroke will give it a younger look. These trees I'm kind of going for an in-between, I'm doing both. You can also take a little bit of it and work it into these as well. You don't need to. It doesn't need to be all of them either. Very easy way to add some extra detail 
and depth in the painting. Now, looking back, I kind of want to do another little bush right here. So I'm going to just start with the top, tap those in, maybe on the other side of the tree. There we go, just a little fix. Once you do them a hundred times, it gets so much more quick, which is, which is wonderful. So with that, with all of that said, I'm going to continue working on this side of the tree. I'm going to switch to the larger square headed brush because again, it is a bit larger. I'll make this area nice and dark for my base layer as we do. Use the corner for areas I want to be more detailed. And you know what? I will fill in the rest of my land right here. Then all we'll have to do is some water and some rocks and a little bit of extra foliage in the middle. I know that this is turning into a longer lesson, but hopefully you're learning a lot and getting really excited about what we're able to create here today. Here I'm going back over that darker area with a little bit of a tap with the corner of my brush and just making that a really nice shadowy area with the implication of foliage and leaves. Then to throw in a little bit of extra detail, I'm switching to the smaller square headed brush, making that dark gray. And then I'll throw in some of these trees. like that. Now, we've been painting for a really long time and we've been continuously slightly washing our brushes but never greatly so. And because of that, paint might be starting to dry inside of them and we don't want that because then they won't have a longer lifespan. I've had these for a couple of years now. They are by Artist Loft. They are not a high quality brush, but they, they're a consistent brush and they're a brush I like. They're, they're affordable, but they're, they're good quality. And they remain so if you wash them. So I'm going to take a break from this. I'm going to clean my water. I'm going to clean my brushes really well. And then I'm going to hop back in to the detail that we have down here. But it's important to remember to clean your brushes well throughout the painting process if it's taking quite some time. So I've washed my, my bowl. I've added new water. I've washed my brushes and I'm ready to get back into the painting. But something I noticed this side of the painting ended up being brighter than this side of the painting and the lights coming down this way, which doesn't make sense. So again, grateful that we're painting this way. That way I got to see that before we painted all of this with color. So instead of moving on to this area, I'm going to take five minutes and just brighten up this side of the painting. I'm going to do so by taking my smaller square headed brush to begin with, mixing up some nice light gray, I'm going to head to the edge of this foliage of this tree. And I'm just going to tap on some highlights initially here, work them back a little bit. And I know I'm changing the painting as I go, but don't you worry, the digital sketch was completed from the final version of this painting, not the starting version. So you already have a roadmap of how it's meant to turn out. This is going to start to blend a little bit with our previous tree or one that's a little bit closer to us, but that's okay. It's worth it to have the effect of light shining down on all of it. I'm also going to, once I start running out of paint, going over some of these darker areas and just brightening all of it. This will make it look so much brighter. And I'm also going to create some lighter highlights in my rocks down here. Now we'll come back, we'll create some even brighter highlights for this tree. It's kind of protruding so it's not catching shadow from this one. So it can really be bright. And now we can make it stand out to a great extent. Remember that the first way you paint it doesn't need to be the way it 
shows up in your final painting. You can always edit, amalgamate, change, fix, redo. Something I love about acrylic painting. Painting in general. Watercolors are a little bit more finite, but oils and acrylics, you, you can really just keep trying until you get it exactly how you want it. Here I'm adding some extra highlights up there, and I'm just really trying to brighten up this side as a whole. We'll throw in a couple little bushes down here, same kind that we have over there, for consistency's sake. There we go. Working around some trees. Add a different type of bush over here. Just kind of have it work up into the light. Now I'll add some highlights to this body of the tree again. You can see that's much brighter. Kind of tapped on a little bit too much right there by accident. It's okay, we'll take some Mars Black and just blend that out. Getting a little bit quiet right now just because I'm fixing up little things rather than necessarily teaching all new lessons, new ideas. It's also a corrective stage, so I don't have a roadmap for it, so I need to think more about what I'm doing, where I'm placing things. And I guess to share that, here I'm just adding some extra branches because they are something that catches light and a fair bit of it. So if I can kind of expand them and send them out in these different directions and I'm moving light or contrast out more than where it was initially, and because of that, we're just making the area look a little bit brighter. I'm also going to throw some extra little bases of trees in the background here. That'll look brighter. I'm trying to make sure that they're also not all the same slant so that they are changing as they go. And now I'm moving back over to this tree a little bit because my last layer dried and it dried a little bit darker. Acrylic paints innately dry semi transparent, so if you're applying a light color over a dark color, generally as it dries it'll look a little bit darker, but it'll also be a little bit darker because acrylics innately dry slightly darker. So, when you really want to build up a highlight, you need to go over those areas a couple of times, and that's what I'm doing here. I'm just going back, solidifying those highlights, rebuilding them, making them nice and bright. So now I'm going to take a couple of steps back again and just see if that fixed the issues I had with it. And I think it did. This area is still really dark, but it is these two trees blocking the way, but those two as a whole are significantly brighter. We can also do like a wash of a lighter value later on, which is something we haven't done in any of these achromatic paintings. That could be fun. But for now, that's really quite good. So. Now we're going to move on to the step I, I wanted to a little while ago, and that's working in down here. I'm going to start by creating some different levels of rocks for water to trickle on top of, fall from, trickle on top of another, fall from it, and continue in that process. So for that, I'm going to take the larger square headed brush, and I'm going to create some darker base layers. So I'm taking a lot of Mars Black, a little bit of titanium white. I want these to be fairly dark initially, just so I know exactly where they are. And then I'm going to just kind of create the edge. I'm using the edge of my square headed brush to define that edge because it's so sharp. And I'm just 
blocking it all out right now. I'm loosely looking at my reference photo, but my reference photo is incredibly detailed and I don't want it to be that detailed. I don't want it to take away from the waterfall or anything else that's kind of happening. So I'm just kind of building my own little ecosystem of rocks here. Just like that. come to an edge right here, kind of fall off. Create another rock that kind of follows that. This will be a fall off area as well. Create a big change in level. This will be top and then it'll move on to these like little levels. And get to the bottom here. There we are. Now for the detailed areas of these little platforms, I'll switch to the smaller square headed brush. Create some more defined little pieces. We can have a fall off happening right here as well. Some little rocks in the water, they'll make it interesting. I'm trying to make sure that all of my rocks are slightly different from the ones next to them. So I'll have them kind of trail off and this one you'll see it has kind of two pieces. The one next to it will be singular and kind of connect to these land masses a little bit. And again, this all looks very stark right now. Don't you worry. We will settle it down as we paint and add highlight. Create another little drop off there, one there. There we go. Now we kind of have these little stairs for the water to fall from. And for that water, we're going to mix up a medium gray. Don't want it to be too dark. Don't want it to be too bright. And we want it to be a medium. That way we can add highlights on top of it, but also it doesn't look as dark as these darker tones that we have. So, I'm going to take this and I'm going to work it now in between all of the darker applications we just created. And this will be all of the water that's kind of pooling and then spilling over. Remember it needs to be quite bright because we're on this side, that side would be much darker and we will do a little bit of that in a, in a minute as well. There we go. Need to make it a little bit darker to match what we have down there, so I'll throw in some extra Mars Black. That seemed to be too much, as you can see. It's all right. Take some extra Titanium White, mix the two together, and now we have something fairly close. There we go. I'm going to take a couple of steps back and just evaluate if I like it compositionally. So after stepping back, I really like that compositionally. I think it works really well. It kind of leads the eye back into here, which kind of meets the path back up into the waterfall. And we just have this kind of swirling composition in the middle of our painting, which is really what we want. So now I'm going to switch over to the medium sized square headed brush and I'm going to add some highlights to the rock that we have right here. And they need to be nice and bright, kind of like that. So I'm going to take a lot of titanium white, just a hint of Mars black, and whatever we mix here, it's going to be slightly darker on the canvas, not because it's going to blend with the black, but because it is going to be semi-transparent and we'll see that darker pigment through it. So I'm going to begin by placing this highlight on the edges because that's where the light's going to come down and hit. And then I'm going to start blending it back a little bit. And I'm going to do some blends that are soft gradients and I'm going to do other things like this motion 
And this just makes it look like there's a second level of rock here that's catching a little bit of light, but it's darker because this is right in front of it. So we're just creating extra little levels of depth and detail in a couple of different ways here. And then I go back and I touch them up with the corner of my brush and make sure my lines are sharp and everything's working as it should. I'm going to leave the back of this fairly dark, but I'm going to make another nice little top area here and blend that back and in. And this is really how we create depth around a subject like a rock, very simply. There we go. Don't want it to be too dark because it is right out in the open. It'll have a lot of reflected light around it. And reflected light is just light that bounces off other subjects. And water is water's a great subject for that. And it makes the back of subjects look brighter even when they're not facing things like the light. So here I'm just filling out more of my rocks. Come back, add a little bit of extra highlight to areas I really want to be bright. And then I'll also add a little bit of that to these ones as well. Being relatively selective with where I add the highlights. And then as you get towards the smaller rocks, you could switch to the smaller square headed brush for more detail. I'm just using this one because I want it to be a little bit more loose and having to work with this larger brush ensures that I'm going to be. Now I'm going to clean this quite well as I'm going to switch back to that smaller square headed brush to apply a little bit of moss. So for that, I'm going to take more of that medium gray I'm just going to do a little bit of a tapping in different areas of it. This will be great in areas where you really want to be green to match with the blue of the water or to kind of connect with it. Here we'll have a lot of moss down at the bottom because that's where moss grows, right, right next to the water. Here we can have some of this draping moss. Nice little detail to add going back over it a couple times and when I do the second or third application I'm kind of applying it in the direction of the light that way it looks like as the light builds it just gets brighter and brighter as it gets closer to the light so it's just a very natural effect there we go Quite nice. Now we have all of these little rocks in here for our painting. Now let's start painting some water. And I'm going to do that here with the smallest round headed brush. And I'm going to use this because it doesn't have a sharp definitive edge and it'll make some softer applications for the running water. But it's small so it'll still be detailed. I'm going to begin by making sure it's nice and wet going to grab a highlight color slightly brighter than the gray that we have in the pooling areas of water. So I'm just going to use a hint of Mars Black. I'm going to create a new area on my palette for this just because the rest is very diluted by gray and getting something truly bright in any of this would be difficult. So I'm going to start right back here and on the edges where the water is going to fall in on top of this darker gray. I'm going to line it with this highlight. I'll do it in a couple of them, that way you can see. I'm doing it with a little bit of a tap and then a drag and then different pressures and that way I just get an inconsistent line going across and that way it looks like the rock isn't a perfect step and the water is going to be falling in different ways. So once I do that, I'm going to start creating some streams that work downwards. So I'm doing these little vertical strokes, as you can see, from that top down to the bottom. And this is going to make it look like that water is falling 
into the next pool. And then you can add a little bit of highlight into the next pool. Now this one's very, fairly far away, so it's not going to have too much detail. But I can show you something interesting with this one. So we have our line, and then I'm going to do lots of these little vertical strokes on top of this dark gray, right? And then once I get down here, I'm going to move my brush back and forth in little zigzags and make it look like the water is kind of rushing about and creating all of this movement. It's easy to do where you have more space. Harder to do in areas like this, but that's okay. It doesn't need that much detail anyway. And once you start doing a couple of them, it becomes really apparent what this all is. There we go. And then as I move out here, it's much more rapid, so I'm going to do a lots of little tapping effects with this brush. And then I'm going to do little strokes like this. And I'm going to keep them separated at first, and then I'm going to start combining them. There are lots of little horizontal strokes to show movement in the water. Sometimes I'm pressing harder to create a larger stroke. Sometimes I'm pressing less hard to create a smaller, softer stroke. I'm trying to create that same diversity that we've been incorporating in the rest of the painting. But this will make the water look like it has lots of little movement in it. Going to move it back this way a little bit more so to begin with. And you know what, I'm actually going to change this moss into falling water. So I'm just going to continue these all the way down to the bottom. I think that'll be interesting. Just like that, and we can do another one over here as well. There we go. Now I'm going to take a couple of steps back and just evaluate the progress so far. Something this process is very evidently doing is making this side of the painting significantly brighter, which is what we were trying to do up there. So we might have overcompensated a little bit there, not considering that, and that's something to consider. That's why we don't go in with our super, super bright highlights until we have paint on the entirety of the canvas. That way we get to add it to each area that actually needs it. That said, I don't think we went overboard here at Hall. There aren't any highlights that are even close to this, so we're still in a safe zone. It's just something to consider. Um, don't second guess yourself too much until you have a good amount of paint here on the canvas. But with that said, I'm going to continue taking that incredibly bright gray that we have, that we incorporated down there, and I'm going to continue moving that out to the right and left hand side. I'm going to do more of it over here on the right hand side of the painting because again, that's where the light's going to be, but I'm going to bring a little bit over there just to show that it's still the same subject and create that cohesive feel in the painting. So here you can see I'm moving over here. I'm not creating a lot of hard strokes. I'm trying to keep things a little bit softer, but I will still connect some of these applications. I'm being a little bit more sparse as well. You can also make your mixture much more watery, and that'll make it more transparent so that dark gray will show through a little bit more when it dries. Until it dries, it'll probably be reflective and look brighter but that is just a little bit of an illusion and something you don't really need to worry about. It is something that you need to make sure you're not overcorrecting for though. So here I'm just continuing these little strokes and trying to leave open areas, letting it get softer and softer. It's kind of funny, I'm painting this 
waterfall in the middle of a forest, kind of something I'd expect to see in warmer climate or territory. However, right now I, I believe I hear people outside of my apartment arguing about snowblowers. It's, uh, it's the middle of winter and there's a lot of snow everywhere. So it's kind of nice to paint this, get into that warmer mindset, be a little bit more adventurous. Well, it's difficult to do in real life right now because of the feet of snow. We can still escape into our own little worlds in our paintings and that's a, a wonderful thing. Here you can see I'm starting to hold it more like a pencil. That's giving me more control, but it's definitely sacrificing my fluidity and making my strokes more intentional than maybe I'd like them to be. I'm going to mix up a little bit of that darker gray that we have now, and I'm going to work that back over some of these brighter highlights. Just soften them a little bit. It's okay if you make them too bright, you can always work backwards. Here I'm also going to take some of that darker gray and do some of those same strokes, predominantly over on this side of the canvas, but then move them slightly over to the other side as well. And again, if it's too dark, just go over it with some lighter applications. The more of these you build, the more interesting it will look. This is something you could do for hours, though I know I am, I am teaching a tutorial, so I probably shouldn't. There is more to teach. We don't even have color yet. There we go. Something else we can do that's kind of fun, we can take these highlights of this nicer gray and you can kind of create a line. It can be moving a little bit like this. And it makes it look like there's a little bit of a fall off here of more water. So like this, but less extreme. And you can create a couple of them throughout and just build so much more depth this way. See that? I'm also going to have a little bit of water trickling down this way. Just like that. Now yet again, I'm going to stand up, take a couple of steps back and evaluate. Something I'm doing a lot at this part of the process just because we're getting so close to having paint on that canvas and I want to make sure that it's coming together correctly. I'm now coming back with a couple of thoughts. One being, I want to brighten up the water right here a little bit. While it is more in the darker side of the canvas, it is going to get some light from up there. So I want to brighten that. But I'd also like to mention the darkness here versus the darkness here. As I moved around the canvas a couple of times, I realized that they are as dark as one another. Truly. It doesn't look like that, uh, especially on the camera, but that's because at the angle the camera is, there's reflection right here, and it's just brightening it a little bit, making it look like a little bit more of a gray. But in all actuality, this is just as dark as that, if not darker. So there's, a, there's an important lesson in that, and that is, move around your canvas before you make any decisions regarding dramatic value because it is it is what it's meant to be it just doesn't look like it is because of the angle of the canvas and the way that light's hitting it so consider that when you're working on your paintings you don't necessarily need to go back and redo things and significantly brighten or darken everything Sometimes it is just kind of an illusion of reflection and that does happen and it's something that's happening right now So I'm not going to go in and make that as dark as that because it already is And if I were to darken it at this point, it would just become unreasonably dark and in any other angle in any other situation 
regardless, like wherever I hang this, it's going to look proper, if that makes sense. And we're going to see that proper depth. So don't jump to immediately re-darkening things or brightening things without getting up and giving the painting a, a proper fair look. Because had I done that, I would have probably made it far too dark and it wouldn't have made sense once I actually went and hung the painting. So consider that. I know I, I got kind of um, fired up in that description, but it's just, I think it's something that we all do at some point and it's so disheartening to say, hey, wait, no, I, I fixed this to look brighter or darker, but now it's it's just far too much. And it's, it's simply because it, it's a bit of an illusion. That, that's really all it is. So don't, don't worry about that too much. With that said, I'm now taking a little bit of my darker pigments and I'm working these back into the waterfalls in a couple of areas. Once you really build in all of those highlights, sometimes it can be a little bit overwhelming. So I'm just going back and balancing it out a little bit. There we go. You can really see all of these different levels in here, which is nice. And with that, I am now going to move on to the waterfall. So here, I'm going to take my medium-sized square-headed brush, and before we paint the water, I want to paint the rock in behind it. That way I can make some of the water semi-transparent. So, I'm going to take this pigment that I had right there, and I'm going to cover most of it. It'll be a little bit darker at the bottom, but I'm going to make a new mixture, just because, again, so much of this is so dark and diluted. It's better to just kind of have a clean start. So here, I'm just applying this. It is much brighter than what we have there, so I'm going to darken it a little bit, take some extra Mars Black. Better, much better. Can be a little bit brighter at the top, but we want it to be relatively consistent. I'm using the sharp edge of the brush here to define that top area, nice and easy and to work around my rocks and pieces of my foreground. There we go. Make it a little bit darker at the bottom. Just kind of blend that into our rock right there. It's amazing what the painting lost once we made that as dark as we did. And that's okay, it just goes to show what the actual waterfall will add to our painting. Here I'm just kind of blending the two together a little bit. Making sure it's all nice and consistent. But from there, I need to let that dry entirely before I start adding on the highlights in the water. I don't want it blending with that darker gray. So I'm going to take a little break from that area and I'm just going to do some touch-ups throughout the painting. So I'm going to take my smaller square-headed brush, create a nice dark leaf color, and I'll just throw this into a couple of different areas that I feel like could have a little bit more diversity in them. It's not really planned, it's just looking at the painting, saying honestly, hey, where is this lacking? What can I do to improve this? Finding those areas and then applying just more of these little applications. Here I'm building some extra little bushes. Here I can add in some little taps of those darker pigments as well. It's kind of interesting. I can touch up this tree right here, make some of those highlights and leaves slightly smaller. It's a small, small little tree, doesn't need leaves to the size of this one right here. Could still be growing. So I'm just doing all of these little taps in here. You can overlap some of the branches as well. It's important to know that branches don't grow simply in front of or behind foliage. 
and it goes in the middle so you should have some foliage behind it, some in front. I'm really glad we're going back and doing this. It's such a, a centerpiece. It's good to spend that time on it. There we go. So many little taps and applications. Can even create extra little pieces of it up here, kind of coming off. It's nice. Also throw some extra foliage into this one while we're at it, might as well. And now that we know how bright that is, we can brighten up some of these. Remember, wait till the end to add those true brilliant highlights. That way you know how it fits in with the rest of the painting. It's all in the right context. Every time we do this, we're creating this extra layer of texture, making this pop with even more detail. There we go. Here I'm just kind of creating this whole new area to the tree. Didn't exist before, but it'll create this line of light in foliage, which is nice. And I'll let it trail off as we get towards the edge yet again, because I do want that slight vignette effect. There we go. Now that still isn't dry, so I'm going to give it 10, 15 minutes, and then come back. In that time, I'm going to clean my brushes really well, I'm going to clean my water really well, and that way, when I come back and I paint with those very bright pigments, they're not being diluted by the darker pigments on the brush or in my little dish here. So, just a reminder to clean your brushes, your water, maybe also a good time to have a little snack or take a drink. We've been painting for quite some time now, and I know that I, uh, I'm a much happier painter when I am well fed and when I have some water. So, I hope you enjoy your little break. I'll be back in probably three seconds. Now I intended to take a break, but I took a couple of steps back. I looked at it and you know what I realized? It was a little brighter than I wanted it to be. So I'm going to show you a little trick. I'm going to take my larger square headed brush, add a lot of water to it, move some Mars black, hint of titanium white, out and do a new spot on my palette. I'm going to add a lot of water to this until the point where it's almost like watercolor, not acrylic. This is essentially how you glaze, by the way, but we'll talk about that in detail once we get to color. With that said, I'm going to take this, going to apply it on top of everything I just painted. It's going to make it all look slightly darker, as you can see, but it's keeping most of that detail in there. If it's taking any detail out, it's just because the paint was still wet. And then I'm going to move it about just so I don't have all of those brush strokes showing through my foliage. Now it'll be a slightly different color right here than throughout the rest. And that's just because the pigments are a slightly different color when they're wet versus when they're dry. When Mars Black and Titanium White are mixed and they're wet, they make a little bit more of a warmer color. When they dry, they're a little bit more cool. So it's just something to consider. But I'm just applying this a little bit over all of this. If you apply too much, you can just take it off with your hand very simply. It definitely dulled a lot of it, and now I have another chance to go back in and build those highlights, but less bright than they were before. So it just gives me another shot, and it, it's a really fantastic thing to do while you're working with these values because, you know, if you're not, and not entirely happy, it's, it's a pretty easy fix. You can make an area darker or lighter very simply without repainting every piece of it, right? We just did a wash and now I'm 
going back in and I'm doing a couple of touch-ups, but it's, it's not half the work it would be if we had to repaint every little piece on top of every little piece. It's just little touch-ups, little highlights here and there. There we go. This is looking much better. I like it. It's a little bit more dramatic. It draws the eye more towards the center of the painting. And now I don't fear that this tree is going to take attention away from the waterfall. Where before it was a little bright and I think it did run that risk. There we go. But now I'm going to actually let this dry 10 to 15 minutes, clean everything, and then I'll be right back. So I let my waterfall dry completely to the touch and now I can come back in with some clean brushes, clean water, and create some really nice highlights and details. So I'm going to do this with the smaller round-headed brush. I'm going to take some titanium white, move that out to a nice clean spot on my palette, take a hint, and I do mean just a hint of Mars Black if I have extra, I kind of put it off to the side, and then I'll mix these two together to make some nice bright gray. From there, I'm going to head to the top of my waterfall, line that top edge with little strokes, and then I'm going to have it start coming down. And I'm going to do this with lots of little taps and applications. That way it looks like the water is separating, coming together, forming streams, maybe it's hitting a rock here or there. And I just want it to be nice and inconsistent. And if you look at it right now, it really isn't the brightest of grays, but we need it to be very bright in the end. Right now we're just building it up. We're going to do a couple of layers with it, and we're just going to take it slow. This is the centerpiece to our painting, and we want to make sure we give it lots of care and attention. So you can see that I'm leaving lots of little openings in here. Then I'm going to come back up to the top, find some areas I want to be more highlighted than others, go over them a second or third time, come back down, and continue that process. And I'm slowly going to make my way down. As I do each time, my paint will dissipate on my brush, it'll become more transparent, and we'll get a darker application down here at the bottom because it is becoming more transparent and you can see the dark gray showing through, which is good. We want it to be a little bit darker, but we still want it to be fairly bright relative to everything else. So this is just something we're going to go back and do a couple of times here. Again, I'm making lots of little strokes. I'm not doing long continuous strokes. You can do that for some waterfalls, but that's not the look I'm going for in this one. I want this one to look a little more choppy. I think it'll make it nice and interesting. Then, here again, going back over some areas, connecting different pieces. There we go. And then we'll bring it down to the rocks that we painted at the bottom. Leave a nice little opening in there. And I'll also make sure that the water isn't falling straight down, but it's kind of being launched a little bit. So it'll move over here to the right to an extent. And I'll go over portions of my rocks as I do this. And the rocks in the background will just give it some extra depth. See how it slowly, and I do mean slowly, builds up into a subject, into the waterfall. Doesn't happen immediately, takes a little bit of patience. 
I'll leave some really dark areas down here at the bottom. Create a little bit of mist by creating that straight line at the bottom, very horizontal, and then I move my brush in a circular motion to create this kind of misty effect. Very voluminous, soft. There we go. Now, I'll take some more titanium white, make an even brighter mixture. This will probably be the brightest mixture we have on the entire painting. I come up to the top. I again redo that top strip. And then I start moving some of that paint downwards. I don't want to blend it too much, otherwise it will get progressively less and less bright because the more you thin it, the more you see the darker pigments underneath. So instead I'll just come back in a couple of times with brand new pigment and brighten it that way. Still leaving some darker areas up there. Some of those true highlights can also show down here, I'm kind of using them to show the slight angle of the falling water. So I'm not having these go straight down, I'm trying to have these more like they're moving on an angle. There we go. We've been painting for so long that my paint's starting to dry on my palette. So I guess it's good that we're getting to the color portion soon. Trying to make it look a little bit rough. This edge should remain quite sharp as well as this one because of course the rock is in front of the waterfall. So it won't go over it whereas the water is moving on top of this rock. So we have two different effects happening there. Going to take a couple of steps back as we do and see how it's looking. So far, I really love it. I think that's a great waterfall. I like how the value kind of matches that over here. But now we know how bright our main subject is going to be, which means we can brighten everything else relatively. So I'm going to take a little bit of that titanium white, mix a little bit of that Mars black, create a very bright mixture. I'm going to mix it right beside my last one and just make sure it's slightly darker than that. I don't want it as bright, but I want it bright. Then I'm going to go back into the trees that we've lightened, then darkened, then lightened, and we're going to lighten them again a little bit. And I'm just going to continue to add a little bit of a pop to this until it gets close to what that is. I don't want it at that level, I want it right under it. So yet again, another excuse to come back and add just so much detail. And again, I'm painting this for a tutorial, a lesson. You get to paint and spend as much time as you like. You don't have to be as quick as me. You can spend hours on just this process if you'd like, perfecting all of these little applications. And it'll do really wonderful things for the painting. There we go. I'm also going to do the same over on this one as well, but only on the right hand side that's closest to the highlights and to the light source. There we go. Going to brighten portions of these branches a little bit. Throw a couple coming out into here. Just create some extra detail. Remember that this area is the brightest. There we go.
Now, hopefully, probably, for the last time, I'll be stepping back for the last layer of this achromatic painting right here. So, after stepping back, I have two thoughts. One, I am done with this for this portion of the painting. I'm now going to clean my palette, my brushes, my water, and then we'll get on to adding the color via a glaze. However, I would like to note, I noticed with this, most of my strokes move up this way, and I don't have a lot that move kind of diagonally in the other way, and it's not as fluid or natural as this tree that I have right here. So if I were to go back, if I were to do this again, I'd be a little bit more random with how I did these strokes, and you know what, I said I was done, but I just, I find it so hard to stop painting sometimes. I'm going to throw in just a couple little pieces of foliage that move in the opposite direction just so it looks a little bit less linear and a little bit less constructed, more natural. So I'm going to make these ones quite visually poppy, quite bright. That way they do kind of combat that angle in which I painted the majority of them. Just make sure that you're continuously changing your stroke so you don't fall into that bad habit that I just did right there. It's okay, it'll still look really good. I just, I know it could look slightly better if I was a little bit more random with my application style there. So again, I'm going to let this dry entirely. You need to let this dry 100% before you go onto the glazing process. We'll talk about what the glazing process is in a second, but make sure this is entirely dry first. Let's come back with clean brushes and clean water, that way we don't accidentally dilute our colors, and I'm also going to clean my palette as well. So I will see you in just a second with a very exciting next portion to the painting. Okay, so we are back. The painting is entirely dry to the touch now, which it needs to be for this next step, and I have a lot of additional materials going on here. So, to break this down, all you really need is a blue, a yellow, a brown, a black, and a white. However, I have a lot of colors here just to kind of mix it up, have some fun, play with some different things. Here I have an ultramarine blue, here I have a cerulean blue, this is a light blue permanent, this is a bright aqua green, this is a primary yellow, this is a cadmium yellow deep hue, here we have a burnt umber, a Mars black, and a titanium white. We're going to use these colors to paint this, but we're going to do so with very thin layers, and we're going to create what is called a glaze. It's a thin layer of paint that's layered on top of a previous layer of paint that adds a hue, a color, but doesn't disrupt the line work or the values. So the goal here is to add on very thin layers, on top of one another, but to retain all of the difference in value that we've just painted. And we thin our paint by using water. You can do so by using mediums and different things as well. However, I found water works really well, and it's such a great medium to work with because it's something that we work with in painting all the time anyway, so the more practice you can get with it, the better you'll get at most everything with it. So that's essentially what we're doing here. Now I'm going to begin with my larger square headed brush. Again, this is two centimeters wide, and I'm going to use this because it has a large surface area and we can cover a lot of painting with it. So I begin by making my brush fairly wet. Then I take a color that I'm going to want. I'm going to start in the background as I generally do. And I'm going to start with a bit of a light blue permanent. You could use a primary blue with some titanium white. I'm also going to grab a hint of my cerulean blue, and I'm going to mix those two together. Then, I'm going to get a lot of water, mix that up, and now you can see the consistency is more of watercolor than it is acrylic paint. So, I'm going to take this, and I'm going to apply it right on top of our background here. Very, very simply. And now you can see we have a thin, thin coating of blue. And we can slowly build this up as it begins to dry and add on all of these additional colors. Here I'm going to continue 
and I'm just going to move it down my waterfall and then even out into this area of the painting. And the more I move it, the more thin it gets, but that's okay because we can always go back, grab some more, and reapply. Just like that. Now different colors apply much easier. So I'll show you one that applies really well. We'll take some ultramarine blue, we'll mix it up with some cadmium yellow deep hue. Together they'll mix a green, which is why we don't have any greens here on the palette. We'll just mix our own. And with this, I can now pick a, an area and just apply it like that. And look, it's a beautiful deep green with lots of these different colors. By the way, this ultramarine blue is essentially a primary blue with a hint of primary red. It's just a bit warmer. And this is more of a warm yellow. So you could throw a little bit of red in there if you're using the primary colors. Now as I get closer to the light in the painting, I'm going to switch over to my primary yellow because it's a bit of a cooler color, and I'll mix my blue up with that instead. I'll also use a little bit of cerulean blue because that's what we used in that area. So we're going to create these different greens with our different yellows. And you can see how dramatically different these two are. This is more of a older, more olivey green, and this is more of a fresh, lush, green. And here I'm just kind of using the corner of my brush to tap over all of the foliage that we had here. And as I start to run out of it, I'm going to bring a little bit into our background here and just create some little land masses back here as well. Because hypothetically a lot of that is also forested area. It just has a lot of brilliant blue light coming through, which again, we will re-add into that. Now as I move into this one, we'll make it a bit more of a yellowy green. So again, cadmium yellow, cerulean blue. Get more of this lush color. But we can also make it more actually yellow by taking primary yellow, cadmium yellow deep hue, mixing those two up. And we can apply that, and that's a really nice pigment to work in there as well. It looks bright, looks a little bit warmer than what we have in the background. And you can see I'm just working my way over our previously applied pigments. Now I'm going to take a couple of steps back and just make sure that it's working the way I want to, as we did with the values. I'm really liking how this is turning out, so we're just going to continue. I'm going to make this tree more of a yellow as well, so we'll take some of that primary yellow, cadmium yellow, a lot of water, and we'll just apply that right here as well. If it kind of goes into the background, that's okay. I'm really not worried about it. We can definitely make use of that green throughout our forest. In fact, you know what? I'll just throw a little bit of it down here where we have some of these highlighted pigments. Now the pigment can start to run a little bit and get kind of drippy. That is okay, that isn't a bad thing, I don't think. It kind of gives it a nice little painterly effect. And I love, I love painting and I love remi being reminded that what I'm looking at is a painting. So I never look at that as a bad thing. That said, you can clean it up or just use slightly less water. Here, I'm putting more of a lush green down on our foliage, just running that across. And then I'll also place it over here as well. Just trying to use different greens and kind of separate them from one another. This area is quite dark, so I'll try some ultramarine blue, some primary yellow, get a nice mixed green. Work that in there. I'm working around the branches for the most part, but if I go over them, that's okay. I can go over them again with my burnt umber in just a second. Now again, I've done a lot. I'm going to step back, make sure the painting's coming along. I think it's still going great. I like how these are a bit of a darker green than those. I think that's working out really well. We need some darker green back here though, so we'll take some more of that Ultramarine blue, some of that cadmium yellow. Just apply this in here too. 
blend it with a cautious hand into the more bright yellow that we have there. And then I'm also going to be fairly cautious in here because this is really where it starts to turn into rock and moss. That said, I do want to do some more highlights with my yellows, so I'm just mixing those up. And I'll throw those up here just a little bit. Just slight hints of highlight throughout the painting. These are our main trees with the most dominant highlight, but you can definitely interject it into other areas as well. And I'm going to add a hint of it over into the tops of these, more so around the middle of the painting just to make it a bit more interesting. Then I'll take that nice bright yellowish green and throw it on this tree right here. Coming along really well. Now I'll take some of my burnt umber, move it out here on my palette, make it nice and watery, take a hint of the cadmium yellow deep hue, and we'll use this for our rock. Just like that. We can blend this into the greens as well, should we want to. There we go. A little bit in the background. See how easy this is? It's just so quick, cathartic, fun, all of the things painting should be. Going over my rocks. If I go over a little bit of the water, that's okay, but I do want to be semi-careful. And if I go over it, I can just use my finger and take that off. Now I'm going to take a couple of steps back again. Just make sure it's progressing the way we want. And in the process, as I'm standing up, I'm, of course, continuing to paint because it's just so hard to stop. I am convinced this painting is as good as it is because we've painted it in the way that we have. And I'm just so happy with this one. Let's add some more brown right down there. But let's make it a cooler brown, so let's do some burnt umber and a hint of our ultramarine blue as well. This will be really nice. And then we'll just throw this in the back here, work it into the foreground, as you can see. Also going to take a little bit of that really dark mixture and throw it into the shadows of some of our rock here. That way we have these warm, highlighted edges and these darker bottom back areas. Combine and work really well together. Just like that. Create a little bit more of that green up here. Really accentuate the blue that we have and we will add. And then of course I also need some of this darker blue brown mixture down in the rock. Being very fluid, just kind of it letting it act like watercolor and figure itself out. There we go. Also going to take a little bit of that darker blue mixture, work in some yellow, and create a slightly darker green for the back of our trees that isn't going to be receiving light. There we are. Great. So now I'm going to continue by adding a little bit of teal down into this water and I'm going to use my bright aqua green that I have right here, 
but you can use a little bit of blue with a little bit of yellow as well. Use much less yellow and it'll kind of be that nice teal color. And I'm going to throw that right down here and it's going to give us yet another almost green in our painting and help us continue to kind of diversify here. Then I'm going to take a bit more of my light blue permanent, a hint of my cerulean blue, and I'm going to do a little bit more of the water. The water shouldn't be a pure blue because it's going to be a reflection of all of the colors that are happening around it. So a lot of these greens, but it should definitely have hints of blue because we do have that up here at the top of the painting. So I'm just taking a combination of those two and I'm working that over my water. I'm going over the darker areas of the steps as well because they're going to have a lot of that reflected color and they're probably fairly wet. So it's all playing a role and that's why all of the colors are amalgamating in the ways that they are. We can take hints of this and work it up our waterfall but we don't want much of it because our waterfall is going to be rushing and so it's going to be much more close to white than it is anything else. That said, if you add a little too much, don't worry. Just add a lot of water on your brush, kind of go from the top, and you can almost peel it off like that. And now it just has those slight hints, but it's not too dramatic. I'm also going to take a hint of this blue, this darker blue, and I'm going to work that along the edges here for my shadows. So all of these little details are just building into our painting. I'm also going to use it to kind of reinvigorate some of these ledges that we have. Peel off a little bit of that paint, like that. I'm standing at this point because I really want there to be a lot of fluid motion in the painting, and I don't want it to be stagnant, and I want to be able to kind of jump around and see it as a whole. Here it's starting to drip a little bit, which I do like. It is giving it that nice paint effect. But we're just about coming to a close. I am going to take a little bit more burnt umber, a little bit more of that cadmium yellow deep hue, and work it into the bark of our trees, give that really nice warm look like that. And I'm just using the edge of this larger brush. We could switch to the smaller one, but again, I'm okay if the colors bleed out a little bit and we get something a little more interesting, because that's really what it is at this point. It's just much more interesting. There we go. Trying to keep it nice and loose. And if you find that some things get a little bit too dark in this process, you can always take a little bit of titanium white, mix it into your pigment, and then re-actually paint areas. So here you can see I'm redefining my rocks, because now the pigment isn't as thin and I can kind of go back to that actual painting process. It's kind of neat. So here I'm just warming this up a little bit. We have a lot of cool colors in the painting. And I don't think it would harm it to incorporate a little bit more warm back in there. Oh, there we go. That's nice. That's really nice. You know what? I think that's where we call it. There we have it. I hope you enjoyed today's hour-long, but probably closer to three-hour-long lesson. This one was quite a joy. I'm really glad we went back to these waterfalls. You know, they just get better and better each time we do them. And working on this with the achromatic palette, while it made it take longer, definitely gave us a lot of really different, interesting, rich colors. The depth in the background, it's just, I'm so pleased. Thank you so much for watching and sticking by. If you are a member over on Patreon, remember that you can use the digital sketch and the reference photo. And if you are a member at the Alpine level, please share your version of this over on our Facebook group. I can't wait to see it and talk with you about it. I will see you next week with a new hour-long painting lesson. I do intend on putting a new poll up on Patreon asking about what those new lessons are going to be, so keep your eye out for that. But I will see you very soon. And of course, if you are new to the channel and you like this, 
please hit the subscribe button, hit the bell button, that way you're notified when I do upload the new lessons and you don't miss a thing. So, I'll see you soon, take care, and above all, as always, stay creative.